all's well that ends well of beautiful stories from shakespeare this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by gemma blythe beautiful stories from shakespeare by edith nesbit all's well that ends well in the year thirteen hundred and something the countess of rosalind was unhappy in her palace near the pyrenees she had lost her husband and the king of france had summoned her son bertram to paris hundreds of miles away bertram was a pretty youth with curling hair finely arched eyebrows and eyes as keen as a hawk's he was as proud as ignorance could make him and would lie with a face like truth itself to gain a selfish end but a pretty youth is a pretty youth and helena was in love with him helena was the daughter of a great doctor who had died in the service of the count of rasselin her sole fortune consisted in a few of her father's prescriptions when bertram had gone helena's forlorn look was noticed by the countess who told her that she was exactly the same to her as her own child tears then gathered in helena's eyes for she felt that the countess made bertram seem like a brother whom she could never marry the countess guessed her secret forthwith and elinor confessed that bertram was to her as the sun is to the day she hoped however to win this son by earning the gratitude of the king of france who suffered from a lingering illness which made him lame the great doctors attached to the court despaired of curing him but elinor had confidence in a prescription which her father had used with success taking an affectionate leave of the countess she went to paris and was allowed to see the king he was very polite but it was plain he thought her a quack it would not become me he said to apply to a simple maiden for the relief which all the learned doctors cannot give me heaven uses weak instruments sometimes said elinor and she declared that she would forfeit her life if she failed to make him well and if you succeed questioned the king then i will ask your majesty to give me for a husband the man whom i choose so earnest a young lady could not be resisted for ever by a suffering king helena therefore became the king's doctor and in two days the royal cripple could skip he summoned his courtiers and they made a glittering throng in the throne room of his palace well might the country girl have been dazzled and seen a dozen husbands worth dreaming of among the handsome young noblemen before her but her eyes only wandered until they found bertram then she went up to him and said i dare not say i take you but i am yours raising her voice that the king might hear she added this is the man bertram said the king take her she's your wife my wife my liege said bertram I beg your majesty to permit me to choose a wife do you know bertram what she has done for your king asked the monarch who had treated bertram like a son yes your majesty replied bertram but why should i marry a girl who owes her breeding to my father's charity you disdain her for lacking a title but i can give her a title said the king and as he looked at the sulky youth a thought came to him and he added strange that you think so much of blood when you could not distinguish your own from a beggar's if you saw them mixed together in a bowl i cannot love her asserted bertram and elinor said gently urge him not your majesty i am glad to have cured my king for my country's sake my honour requires the scornful boy's obedience said the king bertram make up your mind to this you marry this lady of whom you are so unworthy or you learn how a king can hate your answer bertram bowed low and said your majesty has ennobled the lady by your interest in her i submit take her by the hands of the king and tell her she is yours bertram obeyed and with little delay he was married to helena fear of the king however could not make him a lover ridicule helped to sour him a base soldier named barrels told him to his face that now he had a kicky wicky his business was not to fight but to stay at home kicky wicky was only a silly epithet for a wife 
but it made bertram feel he could not bear having a wife and that he must go to the war in italy though the king had forbidden him helena he ordered to take leave of the king and return to rousalon giving her letters for his mother and herself he then rode off bidding her a cold good-bye she opened the letter addressed to herself and read when you can get the ring from my finger you can call me husband but against that when i write never dry-eyed at eleanor bean when she entered the king's presence and said farewell but he was uneasy on her account and gave her a ring from his own finger saying if you send this to me i shall know you are in trouble and help you she did not show him bertram's letter to his wife it would have made him wish to kill the truant count but she went back to rosalind and handed her mother-in-law the second letter it was short and bitter i have run away it said if the world be broad enough i will be always far away from her cheer up said the noble widow to the deserted wife i wash his name out of my blood and you alone are my child the dowager countess however was still mother enough to bertram to lay the blame of his conduct on perils whom he called a very tainted fellow helena did not stay long at rosalyn she clad herself as a pilgrim and leaving a letter for her mother-in-law secretly set out for florence on entering that city she inquired of a woman the way to the pilgrim's house of rest but the woman begged the holy pilgrim to lodge with her helena found that her hostess was a widow who had a beautiful daughter named diana when diana heard that helena came from france she said a countryman of yours count rosalind has done worthy service for florence but after a time diana had something to tell which was not at all worthy of helena's husband bertram was making love to diana he did not hide the fact that he was married but diana heard from barrels that his wife was not worth caring for the widow was anxious for diana's sake and helena decided to inform her that she was the countess rosalind he keeps asking diana for a lock of her hair said the widow helena smiled mournfully for her hair was as fine as diana's and of the same colour then an idea struck her and she said take this purse of gold for yourself i will give diana three thousand crowns if she will help me to carry out this plan let her promise to give a lock of her hair to my husband if he will give her the ring which he wears on his finger it is an ancestral ring five counts of rosalind have worn it yet he will yield it up for a lock of your daughter's hair let your daughter insist that he shall cut the lock of hair from her in a dark room and agree in advance that she shall not speak a single word the widow listened attentively with the purse of gold in her lap she said at last i consent if diana is willing diana was willing and strange to say the prospect of cutting off a lock of hair from a silent girl in a dark room was so pleasing to bertram that he handed diana his ring and was told when to follow her into the dark room at the time appointed he came with a sharp knife and felt a sweet face touch his as he cut off the lock of hair and he left the room satisfied like a man who is filled with renown and on his finger was a ring which the girl in the dark room had given him the war was nearly over but one of its concluding chapters taught bertram that the soldier who had been impudent enough to call helena his kicky wicky was far less courageous than a wife perils was such a boaster and so fond of trimmings to his clothes that the french officers played him a trick to discover what he was made of he had lost his drum and had said that he would regain it unless he was killed in the attempt his attempt was a very poor one and he was inventing the story of a heroic failure when he was surrounded and disarmed porta da rosa said the french lord what horrible lingo is this thought perils who had been blindfolded he is calling for the tortures said the frenchman affecting to act as interpreter what will you say without em as much replied perils as i could possibly say if you pinched me like a pastry he was as good as his word he told them how many there were in each regiment of the florentine army and he refreshed them with spicy anecdotes of the officers commanding it bertram was present and heard a letter read in which perils told diana that he was a fool 
this is your devoted friend said a french lord he is a cat to me now said bertram who detested our hearthrug pets but Oles was finally let go but henceforth he felt like a sneak and was not addicted to boasting we now returned to france with helena who had spread a report of her death which was conveyed to the dowager countess at rosalind by le fou a lord who wished to marry his daughter magdalen to bertram the king mourned for helena but he approved of the marriage proposed for bertram and paid a visit to rosalind in order to see it accomplished his great offence is dead he said let bertram approach me then bertram scarred in the cheek knelt before his sovereign and said that if he had not loved le fou's daughter before he married helena he would have prized his wife whom he now loved when it was too late love that is late offends the great sender said the king forget sweet helena and give a ring to magdalen bertram immediately gave a ring to le fou who said indignantly it's helena's it's not said bertram hereupon the king asked to look at the ring and said this is the ring i gave to helena and bade her send to me if ever she needed help so you had the cunning to get from her what could help her most bertram denied again that the ring was helena's but even his mother said it was you lie exclaimed the king seize him guards but even while they were seizing him bertram wondered how the ring which he thought diana had given him came to be so like helena's a gentleman now entered craving permission to deliver a petition to the king it was a petition signed diana capulet and it begged that the king would order bertram to marry her whom he had deserted after winning her love i'd sooner buy a son-in-law at a fair than take bertram now said le Vieux. admit the petitioner said the king bertram found himself confronted by diana and her mother he denied that diana had any claim on him and spoke of her as though her life was spent in the gutter but she asked him what sort of gentlewoman it was to whom he gave as to her he gave the ring of his ancestors now missing from his finger bertram was ready to sink into the earth but fate had one crowning generosity reserved for him helena entered do i see reality asked the king oh pardon pardon cried bertram she held up his ancestral ring now that i have this said she will you love me bertram to the end of my life cried he my eyes smell onions said le fou tears for helena were twinkling in them the king praised diana when he was fully informed by that not very shy young lady of the meaning of her conduct for helena's sake she had wished to expose bertram's meanness not only to the king but to himself his pride was now in shreds and it is believed that he made a husband of some sort after all end of all's well that ends well recording by gemma blythe end of beautiful stories from shakespeare by edith nesbitt